Good. Pause. Okay. Done. We were at the uh, drunken bar scene. Uh, and what was funny, so, so to me, these guys play so good. And there's a certain level of playing with bluegrass guys where when they're good, it's just the, it's, they're so good. It's crazy, it's like right? It just sounds like magic. And then like very few people could play that good. And if you play like within a mile of as good as they are, you sound to me pretty damn good. Right. And oh, so, yeah. so, so uh, anyway, so at the end of the day, when, when we had to listen to the drunken, the drunken versions of these songs, the drunk versions of these songs, the dudes did not enjoy it. They were like, <laughs> and the, and we got a couple of calls, I mean, because I, I would stay with Fergie because we were making the record together and we'd have, you know, and Ferg was like, man, you know, like, like they got the calls would be like, you know, man, I like work really hard to sound good, <laughs> you know, and they're like, I don't, you know, and they're professional musicians. This is just such a, this is such an unexpected thing to happen. Uh, they're like, you know, are people, is my name going to be attached to that song? Because that song sounds like shit, you know? What I mean? Like, and, and reputation and, down the drain. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then we had to, you know, like, and like we were like, no, it's really going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's like, it's, it's acting and stuff. So, um, so the like, career will not be over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I so, love that so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it was, it really was such a, cool thing to be able to work with these with these guys on that particular project but i'm i'm really glad that it that it exists and that the music has a life of its own you know it really does and it's again i'm i'm really glad that rockstar put that out as like a lp by itself mm -hmm. because people you know like me who kind of have struggled paying attention when you're trying to study but we need to lock in there's mm -hmm. maybe something as familiar as that mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. at the same time it's just, it's loosey-goosey enough, not in a bad way, in a perfectly amazing way. It, cool. It's light enough that I can, like, really relax and, like, lock in. So, I mean... Yeah, yeah it's funny, you know, Ferg had never, for example, the idea of ambient music, you know, and then the idea of, like, what I was explaining is, like, we're basically kind of making ambient bluegrass music, you know what I mean? Like, like where yeah. it's, like really real and there, there, some of it got really loose like there's ones like where you're fishing where it's really loose you know like but it's really just like doing you know um, <laughs> but like but it was it was interesting to see again just to to make kind of a different kind a different approach uh of different structural approach and, uh, and playing approach with these really traditional yeah. players you know what i mean and uh yeah that was a blast that was really cool i think you cool. need to show ferg some brian eno and see his reaction exactly i mean well what's really funny is then since then <laughs> once ferg found out about these sort of you know because like obviously it's a giant that's a giant genre of music that makes tons of money ambient music and and yeah. every permutation of it from and so ferg immediately finds out like oh wait there's money in this you know what I mean? so, <laughs> so he started making ambient tracks and yeah <laughs> yeah yeah incredible like, the pipeline yeah. is beautiful yeah, yeah. wow i know i know it's funny um but but uh yeah it's it's really it's interesting to to play with it's cool like bluegrass guys and nashville guys because the way that music that music initially functioned was it's got to work. It's got to really do what it's supposed to do. Exactly. And there's something kind of like, it's really, you got to be really good to do it. It actually has to function. And then on the other hand, it's funny because a lot of these Nashville guys, they're very uh, cut and dry about it. They're like, so it's like, you have to be like a genius to make it, but then you could, you sell it like chocolate chips, you know, or you sell it like, it's a product it's so funny you know what i mean and whereas you know i guess growing up on rock music and stuff it, it's more it's mushier than that there's like a lot of feeling oh, yeah. and stuff like that and and it's really cool the way that i think like the best bluegrass players it's this combination of like it's the most feeling ever but they're not uh precious about it you know yeah I mean? and it's in like such in, a such a perfect almost like gordon ramsay type way where every note is like i don't know if, if um 
you know how to flat pick, but I've been trying flat picking and it is hard. It's like, really hard. Getting to flat pick correctly, like wears out your wrist. It's just a pain. Oh yeah, it's super hard. So, do, do you know do you know Tony Rice? I do not. That's who you want to look up, Tony Rice. That's he's he kind of set the standard for what flat picking is, and 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 he's very cool. And there's lots of videos. He's 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 since passed, but there's really cool Tony Rice videos where you're just like, geez, and there's there's so much feeling to it. It's so soulful, and he's just he's he's amazing. You'll see. He's like he's cold as ice in some yeah. ways, but he's he's incredible. He's he's really really good. Tony Rice is the guy. He's really really something. Um, for sure, yeah. He's super cool. I was going to ask you about violin. Do you know this band, the, uh, the Dirty Three? No. Oh man, all these um, all so, these new interruptions. Yeah, tell me about them. Well, Dirty Dirty Three are a '90s band that still plays some sometimes. And Warren, the 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 oh, the Warren, is it Warren Ellis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just reading about him this morning. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Interview. I was like, I was really loving it. He's so cool. He's the coolest. And and so hit, Dirty Three, the drummer in Hard Quartet, Jim is in the dirty three with Warren Ellis. And so they, they came up together and I first saw the dirty three when I was like in my early twenties and it blew my mind. And, and, uh, and I've been friends with Jim since then, but Warren is a guy that since you play violin, I think that you're going to want to, you're going to want to check that out because he's really something and what he, nobody really does what he does. Like his favorite bands, he's really into like ACDC <laughs> and, and like, like, but in a that's really like sacrilegious to some of those classical dudes. I've met some and classical way, yeah. dudes and, that are and, so and he's not pretentious. Coming, yeah, totally. And he's not coming from a classical background at all. It's just that he's, and also he's not coming from a rockist thing mm -hmm. either. He just understands that ACDC is the thickest thing it's ever. Yeah, and and that there's this, like you said, like an explosive, unbelievable amount of power, and the, and he kind of took you know how like a lot of acdc songs will end with a big especially the the 70s stuff just a big noisy ending yeah, 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 yeah. all the symbols like, and everything that's where he starts basically like dirty three can basically start this <laughs> you'll really dig it like 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 you'll really dig it um uh i'm gonna listen to him tonight yeah check out ocean songs is there is 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 a classic of theirs mm -hmm. uh ocean ocean songs and then Check out their their latest record is amazing too, which is called Love Changes Everything. And Love Changes Everything is longer, dronier. It's amazing. Um, but Ocean Songs is is people really like kind of live and die by that record. Um, uh, you'll dig it though, as as a violin player and as a oh, yeah. as a listener, I think you'll you'll really appreciate it. I really dig violin in like these rock settings because um, this mm -hmm. is dude John Luke Ponty. Mm -hmm. I I. Dis weirdly discovered him because of this one teacher that got me into prog rock and then you know the, mm -hmm. the downhill slope and so mm -hmm. i found i found john like ponty and it's so cool seeing this dude that has chops on violin and it's not overly weird it's just like he's in the zone and he's got it and so yeah, yeah. i mean he's, he's tasty he's he's you know uh you, you know it's a really cool record um there's this english hard rock band they did two albums really obscure but it's a uk uk it's called high tide spelled t-y-d-e h-i you know high tide h-i-g-h yeah. violin so heavy i think the record was like late 60s but it's like sabbath <laughs> level really heavy and the record's called sea shanties uh check Ooh. that out the really i definitely like will album. It's gnarly. It's so heavy. It kind of, it's like if the doors are really terrifying. Or something. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really a nightmare. Cool. The doors are my nightmares. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's, I've yeah. been getting into a lot of doom and like stoner rock. Like I tried mm -hmm. getting an interview with the Melvins uh, or with Buzz, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to do a Dale Crover interview, hopefully. But yeah, yeah Buzz okay. is a little bit <laughs> too big. For where I am yeah, right now, yeah, yeah. All, all, but, all you got to do, all you got to do is keep trying, you know. Oh yeah. Like, 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 like and I, I really think like re relentless and respectful is, is, you know, you're you're doing something on your own, you know, and like you're you're a young guy, like who's doing it on his own, you know, and you don't have big bucks behind you or anything like that. No, so I wish. Yeah, but but you know you you you're 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 off to a really good start, you know, and I really appreciate and, uh, it. Yeah, man, you know, I mean, like, and you're in for the right reasons, and I. I think if you, you know, 
I'm I'm not I'm not a dummy. I can tell that you're cool. NASA dude is not a dummy. He can tell that you're cool. You know, it's, it's just a, and it's just a matter of being patient. You know, and mm-hmm. and that's and, that's and, just the long run. You know, like I'm hoping that by my senior year, I can get like legit press passes. I don't gotta I do so. this now. Like right now, I'm doing the the gin, the dingy, which is like fun to do the the punk rock method, where like you're yeah, reaching yeah. out to the artists directly. Yeah, but yeah. um. If I can like get a, like for a Lollapalooza or um, right. some mm-hmm. shit like that, and I can get like an actual press pass, mm-hmm. like I've made it. That's I they they you think will. of me as a real press outlet. I've done it. So you will. That, you will. That's the goal. You t- that's you totally will. You totally will be, because again, there, there's just like curiosity, enthusiasm, being cool. It's gonna get you a really really long way. You know what I mean? And and uh uh. And being respectful and having like a, a sense of how cool it is to play music. You know, you got all that. So like, oh, like that's real, that yeah, means man, a lot coming cool. from you, especially, you know, cool, man. Well, well, you know, cool. and the best, the best yeah. part of like doing this stuff is like two years back, I was watching you on my screen and then now we're here. Like, uh, yeah, it really is incredible. And whoever's watching, do your shit, do it. Uh, yeah, people reach out to me with like, um, this dude from Spain, I interviewed Mark of Mudhoney. This dude from Spain was like, I saw that. Get me with Mark. And uh, <laughs> of course, I can't really give him the email. Yeah. But <laughs> I connected him with their PR people and he's in some trouble. And I didn't hear from him for a couple months. And I was like, dude, did you, did you do it? And he was like, mm-hmm. I have the craziest thing to tell you. He met up with Mark in the backstage of some club after the show. They had like a long conversation, like seeing people do it and That's get cool, to do right? it. And then like, yeah. It's beautiful. I've um I'm in the process of connecting some small bands that I'm friends with to John Dwyer of the OCs to get them awesome. to open because John is like I don't know if you know John he is like he's the awesome. awesomest guy to ever awesome. He's very cool. Yeah, he's really cool. He's, he's a really good dude. Awesome. And then he's um a, speaking he's of a tough dude, he's cool. He's really cool. Yeah. He's coming to Atlanta, and I'm gonna be able to go to his show. We already talked about it, so I'm sure. I'm looking forward to like getting beat up. Yeah, like I said, like yeah. I said before, you know. And um, speaking of legends of Cali, you know, like Matt Pike, mm-hmm. like he's such a cool, I'm just saying, I don't mean to push it, but Matt Pike on your show would be That'd quite be literally great, right? the heaviest yeah, thing be, to yeah, ever yeah, have. I, mean, I totally agree. I totally agree. I'd love to do Matt. Because um, I did some shows with him a couple of years ago. Yeah, I should hit him up. It's, 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 that would be a great one. He's one of my very favorites. Oh, and he does I, it. He really he does it. it. It comes from someplace very deep. Oh, it does. Know. So my brother's <laughs> asking me if I'm done. I'm not done. You'll give me a second. Sorry. Um. Yeah, Matt. He is such a bit. I was listening to um Dope Smoker today. It's so inspiring to hear like Swans, like you, someone so dialed in and mm-hmm. doing it. It's like sixty minutes is like a crazy trip. It's insane. And I, I can just imagine. You know, if you're in that mood and you, you do it, because I've listened to it full maybe three, four times, and mm-hmm. every single time you do it, it's totally worth it, and it builds up. And I've been trying to find Matt for a while now, but this guy is like very hard to find. He's, to know. he's he stays busy and he stays kind of yeah, he stays kind of loose. Um, just just keep on just you know again just like enthusiastically like it'll it'll, it'll work. He'll he'll see he'll see that you're cool. You know, it'll work. That's the hope. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. And, well, and and if I if I happen to talk to him, I'll put in a good word. Oh, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, totally. He totally. again. That all those people are just so cool, and that's what's being an interviewer. You know, I'm sure you can relate. It's so cool to know so many people, and to know that there's so many cool people out there that you can talk to and have full on conversations with. So this morning, I was talking to um, Aphex Twin, the guy that made Aphex Twin's logo. His name is Paul Nicholson. He's, yeah, he is like one of the most legendary designers of all time. We were just talking about shit in the morning. And it's That's so cool. Getting to do and then getting to do that and then going back to your normal life and going to a violin lesson and then coming back and talking to you, you know? It's it's insane. It's insane. Well, the more you do it and the more you, the more you do music and the more you keep on reaching out, it all just becomes your life. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. and uh and and uh you know, you're on the way. You're doing it. You're doing it, Don. My plan is, right, here's my plan. I've already interviewed, like, talked to so many incredible people, and I plan to continue to. 
Atlanta has been losing a lot of music festivals. The only big one yeah. we still have is Shaky Knees. And um, the guy that runs that is incredible. But we've lost a lot of these local and even bigger ones. They're gone. So mm-hmm. I know the guys from Mastodon. I know the guys from Ween. Those mm-hmm. are some two top tier headliners. And then I'm thinking like Swans, Dinosaur Jr. These, like, if we can do a local do it yourself DIY, like backyard, mm-hmm. like charity something, sell it out, do this crazy so sick cool. show. Like Desert Days almost, but mm-hmm. with the same like because um the dude from Desert Days is also Phil. He's a he's a good friend. He's really cool. But doing something DIY like that would be so so incredible. Totally, I don't man. know. It's like that's the plan. That'd be a dream. You're gonna do it, man. You're gonna make things happen there. And 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 it's you know with things going away, that means that there's room for new things to 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 happen. So so mm-hmm. like you're. It sounds like you are dialed in and ready to do stuff. And doing stuff already, you're obviously doing a lot of stuff. It's so cool. Yeah. So let's let's get let's get to like one last real question, okay? You got it. This is this is like kind of a big one. This is one that I like to do at the end. What are three moments in your life that really solidified this idea of I want to do music, I want to interview, I want to compose, I just want to be in the music? Hmm. Uh you know probably seeing moments probably seeing shows you know uh when i was in high school probably like seeing the butthole surfers was a big one. Oh, you saw them oh yeah a lot um you know um or seeing the replacements on saturday night live was a really big deal just like i couldn't believe that something that i felt really close to sounded so good on in 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 a big context i think that that made an impression on me um and uh i think just playing music with my friends the and it making up something and it feeling like it sounded good like in you know when i was in my dad's basement with like my friend steve apicella and and uh, actually claude coleman the drummer and ween he was i interviewed claude he's my friend yeah he's so cool uh, yeah, we 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 grew up together, and I, I played in my first band with him, and, and so that's actually so, so insane! Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, or actually, actually, my second band, but but uh, um, but you know, stuff like I could definitely I I could still remember what it felt like playing with with Claude, and just be like, wow, this sounds amazing! I just want to do this. You know, this is so cool, and like we we can we can do this too. You know what I mean? Like we we sound good. This is incredible. You know what I mean? Like that that really excited feeling of you just made up something and, and it's just you and your friends, but you know, it's good. Yeah. That's kind of the best feeling. I think, I think oh, it's yeah. all downhill. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You're setting yourself up for disappointment. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and speaking of we and like, um, that interview was really something, uh, with, uh, cool. with Dean, right? Yeah. He's yeah. the coolest, the absolute he coolest. He um, is. I love him. Were, were there some like really standout moments from that? I mean, you know, I dude, I've known these guys since I was fifteen <laughs> or sixteen or something like that. So, uh, what was cool about that one actually was like we showed up and he was he was so ready to go and had written this song, Dick uh, Dicky Betts. Hold on one second. Um, he, he had written this amazing tune, you know, and and was like all right, we're going to learn this song. And I was like, what? You know, and like, so he like sat me down and immediately like. Is that the intro like, song you guys play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing is so cool. And and uh, uh, I remember thinking that like that should be the guitar moves theme. Um, but but that's, a, that's an original Mickey jam. And like that one was really tricky. And it was funny. He kind of, he kind of threw it on me. He's like, well, come on, this is the show. Come on, let's go. You know, and so I had to like, I had to be on, I had to be on my A game with with old Mickey, but that's always the way with 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 yeah. with Mickey. He's always He's on his A game. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I he can is. imagine like a a fly fishing trip with with uh, Dean and with Les from Primus and um, Seb from Viagra Boys. He would be really cool. Um, he that is, would be great. I got to talk to him in uh, I think a couple months ago. He was like so cool, and he was telling me about how he got dropped off in the middle of Sweden to do a fishing trip. 
Like, is that wild? And, and then Billy Strings, because I know he's the fisher. Imagine these three or these four giants That's in the music really industry good, I, doing this idea. fishing show. I mean, really good idea. that would be incredible. And like down here in Georgia, we got the Chattahoochee, right? I do rowing on the Chattahoochee. And we got like rainbow trout. We have so much rainbow trout. Imagine these dudes in a road trip, road trip show, fishing, music. Let's make it happen. I think that's a killer idea. Let's make it happen. <laughs> that's really cool. I know. That, I've been trying to get less on the show for um, forever. And again, he's like one of those, he's very big and very busy. He's a, he's a white but, whale, as they say. Yes. Oh, yeah. White whale right here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that, it's like we said, it's the goals. It's the, the future, seeing that. And already thinking that you guys are gonna tell you're gonna come to Atlanta, and I'll get to see you, and you know, just hang out. And um, I'm telling the place you guys are gonna play in Atlanta. I think it's gonna be the Variety Playhouse because that's where uh-huh. bands your size play. And I love mm-hmm. that's where I saw Swans. Incredible. Oh, cool. Right next to it is this bomb mm-hmm. ass shawarma place. It's Swarm, it's like bomb ass shawarma. It okay. is connected to the venue. You can't oh, really walk okay. through, but it's right there. We're gonna Great. get some late night shawarma. It's gonna be bomb. Yes, we will. Yeah, and I'll buy you March one. night. Huh? I'll buy you a shawarma. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Shawarma's on me. Shawarma's yeah. on me, dog. Sh- a round of shawarmas for everyone in the house, right? <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll probably get a little pricey, right? But um, <laughs> again, I really appreciate this. This has been of course, man. incredible. And uh, I'm so looking forward to whatever you do next. If it's, I think, maybe like at t- the 10th anniversary of Red Dead 2, probably going to come up in the next couple of years right jesus yeah oh my so God. <laughs> like a uh if something happens for that you know i'd be really pumped to see what happens and i'm really excited whenever you make me music if it's with chavez if it's with whatever so keep on trucking i want to i want to see be, it there's gonna be a lot of hard quartet there's gonna be a lot of hard quartet exciting that is really yeah. very ex- i'm looking forward to that is, is it uh october 4th is coming out that's right. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. I love that. Um, One of the dudes you interviewed made that the claymation video, uh, the one with the cool sunglasses. That, that interview is great. Yes. And that video is He's so awesome. sick, and that song is so sick. He's great. Oh, everything about it, dude. I'm looking forward to that. I really am. <laughs> that's like, that's a big one in October. That and then uh, I think Godspeed You Black Emperor is doing a new release then. And that's going to be, I just know that's going to be incredible. And then Swans is going to come out with some new shit. Uh, it's a lot of, lot of music coming out this fall for sure. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so, anyways, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm looking forward you, Jay. to everything that comes in the future. And uh, have a great day, man. You got it, Jay. You have a great one. Stay in touch. Of course, dude. I will be sending you some good music recs. You got to start with Viagra Boys because they're too good. Hell yeah. All right, we'll see you around, man. See you, man.